Hi, Roy Williams with Airframe Components, and today's topic of discussion is Piper PA-28 and 32 Series Aircraft Wings and uh, AD 2020-26-16. Since the initial Piper Arrow wing separation incident in 2018, there have been numerous YouTube videos, owner group articles, magazine articles, and ad nauseum uh, regarding the Piper wing spars. So our topic of discussion today is simply the different variations of the Piper wing spars. Uh, I have several here today. This is a complete spar assembly. You can buy this from Piper, and this is complete all the way from the fuselage out to the tip. Uh, the wing spar splits into two portions, inboard and outboard portion. So today our uh, topic of uh, focus of discussion will be on the inboard spars. This is what the AD are uh, primarily concerned with. First, uh, let me premise this uh, video by saying that the service bulletins, the ADs that are on these wings, Piper has muddied the waters with factored service hours, computed service hours. People get all wound up. You know, this is 2025. In the five years that this AD has been out, people are uh, worried about, you know, does this AD apply to my aircraft? Does my aircraft have enough hours to warrant having uh, eddy current inspection? Uh, again, uh, the hours that they're talking are way beyond what most normal aircraft, privately owned aircraft are going to have as far as total time. Uh, even if you were within a thousand hours of having to have a spar done, how long would it take you to compile another thousand hours in your aircraft? Uh, most privately owned aircraft you know, 50 to 100 hours per year would be doing very good. So, uh, you know, let's not get too wound up on uh, if the aircraft actually needs to have a spar replacement. Uh, let's cross that bridge when we come to it. But today we're going to talk about if the wing has been determined that uh, uh, it does need to have a spar replacement, what will we do uh, to get the wing in an airworthy condition after that? So we have here right now, we have the basic Piper PA-28 wing spar, and this is the standard wing spar that all of the uh, aircraft come out of the factory with. Piper has come up with a new Piper wing spar, and this is the same spar as before with additional doublers and angles added to it. Essentially what we're doing is turning a standard PA-28 wing spar into a Dakota wing spar is essentially what this is with these extra angles. Now you can buy the kit from Piper to add the additional wing channels and angles to your existing spar, or you can buy the new part number of spar with the angles and doublers already attached to it. So today we are going to make the assumption that it has been determined that the spars need to be replaced in a set of wings and that the wings have been delivered to our facility for spar replacement. So this is a uh, right hand Cherokee wing right here, a PA-28181 Archer wing. And uh, we've already removed a couple of skins and uh, to remove the spar from the wing, we start by taking the fuel tank section out. So the fuel tank comes out of the wing and then the inboard wing leading edge portion, we call it the triangle section. This triangle section comes off as a unit. That is removed from the spar and then this outboard portion of wing here, outboard of the tank, and this goes from the fuel tank out to where the flap ends, then this portion comes off as a unit as well. With the fuel tank removed, the inboard triangle section removed, and this outboard leading edge section removed here, we now have complete access to the inboard spar portion of the wing. 
You can see inside right here where the inboard and outboard spars overlap. We can reach in, remove those rivets on the upper and lower surfaces of the wing spar. And you can see this on the wing as you're doing your walk around of the aircraft right here at that intersection. The rivet spacing is doubled up as well. So you can easily identify where the inboard and outboard spars come together. But the spar does not just slide in and out of the wing. The whole uh, front edge of the wing needs to be removed from the wing uh, assembly to give us access to the complete inboard spar section. Once we have gained access to this point, we can now remove the inboard spar from the wing assembly. This particular wing is a right-hand wing, so we will want to pay attention to the wing walk area, checking for cracks in the doubler underneath the wing walk. Uh, you can go back and reference uh, earlier videos uh, that we have regarding that topic as well. Now let's go ahead and look at the left-hand wing that already has the new spar installed in it. On this left-hand wing assembly with the new inboard spar installed, we can now clip the leading edge section into place. We can clip the inboard triangle section into place. And now the wing is ready to go back into the jigging fixture for reassembly. As you can see, uh, this Piper wing structure is fairly simple, and I would hope that today's discussion would shed some light on uh, uh, the process of uh, changing out these spars. Again, I think I would uh, caution owners to uh, not get too wound up on uh, determining uh, computed service hours. Uh, let's, uh, let's stop and think about how many years it will take us to get to a certain number uh, and the number of hours we fly each year. Uh, does, does your aircraft really need to have new spars put in? Does it need to have wing structures uh, taken off and uh, additional kits added? Uh, a simple inspection uh, would be a, a good place to start. Uh, even the eddy current inspections are not that intrusive, not that expensive, relatively uh, uh, cheap compared to the overall cost of the aircraft. So. Uh, uh, if it does get to that point, uh, the new spars can go in there. Uh, Piper has been working diligently over the last five years, uh, coming up with uh, uh, different inspections, uh, different improvement kits, and uh, this fleet will continue to uh, flourish for many years to come. That's all for today's discussion. Stay tuned for more episodes from Airframe Components.